Your last game was actually a one-player puzzle called Turn Off the Lights. The new game that you're going to make is a two-player game. So this video is to walk you through the process of how you think about extending the framework to be able to handle a game where you have two players that alternate turns. You remember from last time that there are three different roles that the classes play. There's the model, which stores all of the information about the game, and stores the logic about how the game actually works, what constitutes a valid move, uh, what it even means to move. Then there's the controller, which is which handles all the user interaction. It usually tells the model what moves the user is requesting, and it asks the model what the current state of the game is, and then gives that information to the view so that the view can display it to the user. And of course, the view is the class that controls how things appear to the user. So if we want to think about how to extend our game to support two players, that's really a job for the model, because we're changing what information we're representing about the game and the logic of how the game works. So let's go ahead and open up our model class, which was what? It was game board. I'm going to make the font a little bit larger here. <clears throat> All right, so so far, we only have one variable. It's this 2D int array called grid, and that's the game board. And we had this code that we were using before where a zero inside the game board means the light is off, and a one meant that the light was on. For the new game, there are three possible states for each possible game location. Either there isn't a piece there yet, so it's empty, or it's the first player's piece that's there, or it's the second player's piece that's there. So I think the most natural way that I can think of to represent this would be using the number zero in the grid to mean that the square is empty, using the number one to mean that player one's piece is there, and using the number two to mean that player two's piece is there. So we don't actually need to change anything to be able to represent all three player pieces on the all all two player pieces on the board. Um, but we do need a way of keeping track of whose turn it is. So let's add a new variable for that called uh, current player. And we'll set that, well, let's set it in the constructor. So in the constructor, we'll set current player to be equal to one, which means that we'll start with player one's turn. So let's think about moving now. When somebody moves, we want to put a number into the grid in the location where they clicked. Last time we had something kind of like this. We said, let's look at the grid at row column. And we set it equal to one, which would just, well, in the previous game, this would turn off the lights. Um, for the current game, this would mean put player one's piece there. Right now, though, we don't want to put player one's piece there. We want to put down whatever number represents the current player. One way you might think about doing that would be with an if statement. So you might think, if the current player is one, then we'll put a one in the grid. Otherwise, if the current player is two, then we'll put a two in the grid. This, of course, would work. But it's a little silly, because we are putting the number into the grid that's the same as the number inside the current player variable. If this variable has a 1, we're putting a 1. If it has a 2, we're putting a 2. So a much shorter way of doing the exact same thing would be to remove all the if statements and just put the number inside current player in the grid directly. After we've put a number in the grid, the move was successful, and so we would want to switch whose turn it was. So if the number inside current player was one, we want to change it to be two. And if it was player two's turn, then we want to change the number back to one again. I hope that that pattern feels familiar because you did the same pattern in the turn off the lights game when you were changing the state of a light from off to on or from on to off. You could put the code to do that here at the bottom, but I think a nicer thing to do is to create your own helper method to switch the player turn. I think a good name for it is switch player turn. Um, and then you can create your method down here, void switch player turn. It takes no inputs. And then I'll write this, you fill this in. Um, and this is the method that should take the current player turn. And if it's two, make it one, or if it's one, make it two. When we run the game, you can see that when I click, it colors the location red, which means that we'd put the number one in there. But then the very next click I make, it makes a different color, and that's number two. 
and then we're back to one, player two, player one, player two. Clearly I'm not doing any type of safety checking or actually doing the moves that we wanna do. If I clicked outside the grid, it would throw an index out of bounds exception. Uh, if I click on top of an existing location, it will just overwrite that location. So we're not actually making a move yet, but I just wanted to make sure that we're able to put a piece down and that the player turn is alternating correctly. The last set of changes requires that we think about what does it mean to make a move in this game. In the previous game, a move was complete when you clicked on a single location, because a move consisted of just choosing one spot to turn on and off the light. This game is a little bit more like checkers or chess. You select two locations. You select the location of a piece that's yours, and then you select a target location for where you want to move the piece to. What that means for our model class of game board is that the inputs to move need to change. Now it's not enough to say, I want to move at this location, because that's not enough information for the game board to know what kind of move you want to make. A complete move requires two sets of locations. So we'll call one start row and start call. And that's the starting row and column where you want to move from. And then target row and target column will be the location you want to move to. As you can see, this has broken several things in the method. So let's fix them to do what we would want them to do in the new situation. So this debugging info, we want to keep that line, I think, but we want to update it so that it displays all four of these variables. So I'm going to say you tried to move from start row, start call. Let's make this a print statement instead of print line. And then to target row, target call. So you should make that change as well. And then the other thing that's changed is now there is no more row call to put the current player piece down. Um, if we want to, we could make this target row target call. And we'll probably need to change this eventually when we think about making the move the way that it actually needs to be made. But I want to fix all the problems just so that we can test this much. Um, because testing as you go is the best way of ensuring that you don't have difficult to find bugs when you get to the end. If we want to be able to test this with both players, we need to initialize the grid, not just with player one's piece, but also with player two's piece. So let's go ahead and in location three, two, Put player two's piece. So now before we test, we'll have to jump on over to the controller class, which is either run graphical game or run text game. And we need to make changes there so that instead of telling our game board to move after every single click, we have it register two clicks and save the starting location and the target location before actually running our move method so that it can tell our move method all four pieces of information it needs to know. If you're working in IntelliJ, when you come back in the next video, you should choose the IntelliJ version. If you're working in Repl.it, you should come back next time and see the Repl.it version. Or if you want to, you could watch both.